Good afternoon, everyone, and it is a real pleasure to welcome you to the first of a string of events launching Carers Week in 2020. Um, my name's Evan Wallace. I'm the partnership coordinator for the Carer Gateway, and it's really, really exciting uh, to have so many people joining and to also, yeah, be um, getting underway for the first of our events in our conversation today with Moana Hope. Um, before we get underway, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands of which we meet today. I know we're spread out all over um, Victoria and even a few interstate visitors as well too, um, who are joining today's conversation. So that's wonderful. Um, you're on Zoom, um, make sure that you uh, keep um, uh, the video off and also the, um, the audio muted. That's really important for today. Um, as you can see on the Zoom function, there is a Q&A box. Um, today we're opening up um, the opportunity to put your questions to Mo Hope. So as the uh, conversation with Mo goes along, be sure to um, yeah, type your questions in the Q&A box and looking forward to posing them uh, once we um, finish our more formal conversation with Mo. But that's enough for me for the moment. I'd like to introduce Vicky Down, who is the uh, manager of the Care Gateway in Victoria, who's going to tell you a bit more about the gateway and a bit more about where we're heading with today's conversation. Vicky, great, film. great that you're here. Thanks, Evan. Um, welcome, everyone. National Carers Week 2020 runs from the 11th to the 17th of October and aims to raise awareness of unpaid carers and their caring role in Australia. The theme for the, ca the campaign this year is why we care. And um, I think as a carer, we, should, we all know why we care. We deliver, we deliver support across Australia to about 2.65, well, sorry, Apologies. There are about 2.65 million unpaid carers in Australia who provide unpaid care and support to family members and friends. Um, particularly during the time of COVID, um, carers have had a very tough time lately and um, COVID has had a significant impact on unpaid carers. It is estimated that carers will provide 2.2 billion hours of unpaid care in 2020. That works out to about $78 billion or just under $1.5 billion per week. The rate of employment among primary carers, those who provide the most care for an individual, is 47.3% compared with an Australian average of 65%. The estimated earnings of all unpaid carers, these are the earnings that are lost, are $15.2 billion. 60% of all unpaid carers are female, a figure which increases to 70% when considering only primary carers. Over a third of all primary carers fall within the lowest socio socioeconomic um, percentages across Australia. The Carer Gateway in Victoria, as the video you saw already um, has um, advised you, is delivered by Mary Health in partnership with six key partners, Alfred Health, Barwon Health, Bendigo Health, Ballarat Health, Family Care and Uniting. And we also have um, Carers Victoria delivering services on our behalf in the Western Metropolitan Region of Melbourne. The sort of services we deliver include assessment and planning for carers. Um, we also provide carer-directed packages, um, emergency respite, and we also deliver counselling, peer support and coaching. Um, in Victoria, as, as we said, there's approximately 750,000 carers across the state, and we're fortunate enough to have our partners deliver services in key locations across Victoria. Um, our 1800 422 737 number is the um, best number to contact us on, or you can call us on, or you can call us via the Care Gateway website and, and ask for a call back. Currently, during COVID, we are open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So if you need to speak to someone after hours, we're available till 8 p.m. and you can speak to one of our intake workers. Or after that time, if you need emergency respite, you can call us and one of our after hours operators will respond. 
Um, today we've been very, very fortunate to have um, Moana Hope join us um, for our inaugural Carers Week 2020 event. So um, I'd just like to introduce, or just tell you a little bit about Moana, and she will obviously answer more questions later. Moana is a powerhouse of women's football. She's a marquee player for Collingwood and North Melbourne, and is renowned for her goal kicking prowess. She's also familiar to audiences of Australian Survivor and has been featured in Australian Story on the ABC. In 2017, she released her memoir, My Way, published by the Melbourne University Press. Her message to young women everywhere is to stay true to themselves and not feel like they have to change to be accepted. This ethos is also likely a driving force behind the love and support she provides her sister Vinny as her carer. We're very excited to have Moana as our special guest today for Carers Week and look forward to hearing about what inspires and motivates her. Moana, welcome and I'll hand over to Evan. Mo, we're going to cover a fair bit today about um, your role as a care and your connection with Vinny, but I want to zoom out a little bit before doing that and acknowledge that most people who are joining this conversation at the moment are still living in lockdown environment right now, um, that it's been a really, really challenging year uh, for all of, um, all of the attendees and also you know, more broadly speaking for carers in Victoria and across Australia too. Um, so what I'd like to do is cast our minds back to a time before COVID-19 was just a, a blip on the radar at the start of the year. And I'm curious to hear, what, what were your plans for 2020? Where, where were you thinking that this year was, was going to head for you um, before everything changed? That's a great question. Uh, <laughs> so I'm the kind of person who actually bizarrely enough, doesn't like to plan too far ahead because um, I've just got so much going on that normally like if I plan a holiday, it's like, okay, next week we're going away um, um, rather than, you know, planning a couple of months in advance. I think for us personally, a couple of the hardest things um, that, that it's changed that we've had to go through, um, you know, especially because like you think about January, January was the, was the bushfires, um, you know, which, was before COVID and, and for us was, was hard to watch so many people suffer. And then, you know, um, February, I was actually in Japan on a holiday, which was my last official holiday. Um, and then came back and we, we got, we pretty much got pregnant as we come back. And then ever since then we've been in lockdown. So um, I guess if it wasn't COVID, what would I be doing? I'd probably be spending a lot more time with my family. That's probably what I would, yeah. you know, it's, it's like my mom's birthday today uh, and I can't even be there to give her a hug on her birthday, which for me is, is really, oh. really hard. Um, Happy but birthday yeah, to mum. Yeah, absolutely. So for me, it's more, I'd, I'd spend a lot more time with my family. Family has been so, so important to everyone really around the world during, during this time. And as you were saying that you wish that you could spend more time with your family um, uh, in 2020, but tell me about the air importance in terms of, um, yeah, what sort of support you've drawn from family during these challenging times. Well, yeah, it's, I think it's been a little bit, for me, my, my story's a little bit difficult because, um, you know, when I think about my mum, she, she's, she's got a lot of health problems, so she would be considered somewhat high risk. Um, mm. And then Vinny, so Vinny's immune system is not like yours and mine. So we're a little bit worried about Vinny and then um, Val, uh, my wife is is pregnant, so we're also worried about her. So I feel like mm. you know through this time it's been quite difficult because uh, my mum has had to close up her house, not as in close as in like she's not many people can come in and out unless they live there. And we live mm. outside of five five k's to my mum, so we can't really go yeah. there either. So the, one of the most challenging things for me is with Vinny. Um, you yeah, know, uh, I found especially for during the first lockdown, she got she got. Um, she got quite agitated um, um, mm -hmm. and she didn't know, she didn't understand why she couldn't go to my mum. She didn't understand why um, she couldn't see family. And, and then she couldn't also go to school, which was really hard for her. So I just found she was getting um, really upset about it and she doesn't really know how to express that. So we just had to see it. And then it was really hard to, to, to deal with that. Like how do I um, take her out of that state of mind of being really sad and really upset and, not understanding fully why she just can't go to my mum's or she can't go to school or 
you know, see, see brothers and sisters. I think that's been one of the big challenges for me, I think, through this with Vinny. Oh, that's really, really tough. Absolutely. Um, and to sort of make that adjustment when, you know, family is so important and, 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 and drawing, a, you know, and, and you're so used to seeing one another too, for then for those, um, those barriers to be there. How, how have you stayed connected with family over this period? Zoom. <laughs> Zoom. Uh, a lot yeah. of Zoom, um, a lot of FaceTime. Uh, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, we are, you know, for me, as I mentioned before, like with my mum and Vinny and Belle, you know, we're not, we're, we're in a very uncertain world right now within not knowing if, if you know, if my mum got it, she probably wouldn't make it through it. That's the honest truth with all of her health battles. Um, yeah. And we're not sure yeah. with Vinny and, and I would hate to think about Vinny being in, you know, something like an ICU without me and, and same with Belle. So um, we want to comply with the rules because there's so many other people out there that's just like Vinny and just like my mum. And, and we, we can't be selfish in that sense. But um, yeah, it's definitely been tough. Like it's, it's really been a struggle, I, I think. It sounds like a, a really, really tough time. And, and that sense of how it's such a continued ongoing challenge as well for, for so many people, for carers, for, for families out there. Um, would like to hear a little bit more about your relationship with Vinny. Tell me, tell me about Vinny as a person and, and I'm really keen to, to learn a little bit more about her. Yeah, so Vinny, um, she's, I've got to get this right. Uh, so I think she's 27. She's 27 years old. Okay. She's my little sister. So I am, yeah. I'm one of 14. So I've got a big family. Um, and Vinny was born with, with, with a disability called Mebia syndrome. Um, she was the second person ever in, in, in the world born with maybe a syndrome. So our specialist from, from the Royal Children actually flew to America to gain some more experience around how to work with it because they originally thought she just wouldn't make it through. She wouldn't make it very far. She was kind of like a, she was kind of like a vegetable, like she couldn't move her arms and legs. She had no, um, you know, no say over her body or anything. So uh, we, we really just went with Vinny growing up um, very unsure, but we as kids didn't know so we were just like it's our sister let's go and the doctor just couldn't believe her progress and she just kept just you know uh, you know we, we put her in bikes that would we would you know that would hold her arms and legs in to get fluid moving and they just couldn't believe how, how much she was developing which was amazing and i think that was a credit to just being around so many people um, but, you know, to explain to you, uh, you know, her now, like she's 27 now, but, you know, the, the, the mental capacity of a small child. So we're still teaching her how to brush her teeth. We still make sure we're there to help her get dressed and shower. We still make all of her meals. She can't be alone. She needs that 24-7 care. Um, and I don't want to make her sound that she can't do anything, but they're the things that, you know, I've been able to teach her how to dress herself, but it took me four years but still sometimes yeah. she'll put her top inside out or around the wrong way. But that's how long it took me to teach her how to, how to get dressed. And, and we're in the middle of teaching her um, about um, brushing her teeth. And it's just the information retain, retain, retain for her. So we're just going to keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And eventually, like it might take months, might take years, but then it will click and it'll just become a process for her. So that's Vinny in a nutshell in saying that she's also like my little best friend. Um, uh, yeah, we generally don't go anywhere without her, um, and she probably gives me the most banter. Uh, that sounds like a really, really special connection and, and special friendship, um, and really, really great to hear. You're a really, really busy person, Mo. I know that from as much as I've read about you and um, to date, and um, I always see you popping up here and there as well too. So it's, uh, it's, it sounds like that you have a lot of things on the go. But before talking a little bit about those different roles and different responsibilities that you have, I'm curious about looking at a, if there is such a thing, a, a typical day in the, the life of, of Mo Hope, and particularly when thinking about your role as a carer. Um, tell me, how does, um, yeah, um, your caring responsibilities feature within the day? Yeah, so I also work full time as well. So I can't, I'll give you a snapshot of what my day looks like. Um, so Vinny between uh, nine to three, she goes to a day program, she calls it school, so I call it school. Um, and they, every day at, at a day program at school, they're teaching her 
you know, life skills. Every day is something different. So we're like, for example, Monday's cooking, Tuesday's English, um, Wednesday is dancing, and then they've got transport as well where they teach them how to get on and off um, the trains. So that's, the, that's where Vinnie goes to school and absolutely loves it. It's her favourite thing. Um, so that's what she does between nine and three, Monday to Friday. And, and the school's amazing. Um, you know, I, I love all the teachers and what they do there. Um, but for me, I, my day normally starts at 5 a.m. So I'm only up at five because I train early and I start work early. Vinny normally loves helping me with work. So she'll get up at about, she actually gets up at six um, by choice. It's her, it's her favorite thing to do. So she gets up at six. Impressive. Yeah, she, she literally on, up right on the clock every day. She'll get up at six. Um, we'll make a coffee together. She sits down and helps me with my work. Uh, we have chats and then she'll head off to school. Um, but in that morning, it's a case of making, getting her dressed, um, you know, brushing her hair, I still brush her hair, um, prepping her lunch for school. And then she heads off to school and then she'll come back at, at three. And then at three, we, she, she trains every day. She's an absolute inspiration. So she'll train and then we will, um, you know, she'll shower, we'll get her dressed and then we'll prep her dinner. She has dinner and she hangs out with us. And then she'll head off to bed and then she'll repeat that pretty much every day. Oh. So she just, lo- it's all about routine. Like routine, but also managing to keep it as fun as possible too, right? It sounds as though these are really special moments where lots of, uh, lots of smiles on people's faces too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I wouldn't have my day any other way. Like she yeah. has my day started on a high and, and then when she comes home and I see her training, I'm just like, you know, you're such an inspiration um you know just because she's just she just has this outlook on life that i wish everyone did because i feel like you know the world would be a better better place a nicer place um and i just love that i love being around that that's wonderful it's a really 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 affirming thing to hear um, just for all of the viewers who have joined us on uh, today's webinar, make sure that you keep sending through your questions using the Q&A box. We've had a, a couple of questions come through. Definitely want to see some more though, because um, yeah, we'll be uh, taking your questions and putting them to, to Mo uh, towards the, uh, the end of this uh, webinar. So keep them coming along. Um, you talked about your busy schedule and, and your busy routine. And at the best of the times, Mo, it's often really challenging to balance different commitments and, and different identities. And so far you've talked about your role as a, as a, as a, a businesswoman, as a carer, as a, as a wife, as a friend, as a footballer. Um, and um, there's a lot, there's a lot of things on the go. How, how do you go about balancing all of these sort of different responsibilities and, and how, do you, how do you sort of bring it together for yourself? Uh, yeah, I actually ask that question a lot because like my, you know, my days are very long and, and I um, tend to never stop. Um, but for me, you know, Vinny, I love her. I'll do anything for her. Um, footy, that's my outlet. That's my thing. I love kicking the footy around, you know what I mean? Like when I get to kick a footy and train, that's just a different kind of, you know, zen for me. Um, work, I'm very proud of what I do. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm, I missed a lot of school growing up because I was my full-time care for my dad who had cancer. Um, so I missed year seven to year 11 because I was taking care of him and then he passed away. Um, you know, so for me to be able to come from that to running, you know, my own business and I've got like 115 people that work for me, I'm very proud of that. Um, and then, you know, when you mix that with family, I love family. So everything I do is with purpose and with love. I'm not really doing it them just, you know, just because, or, you know, it's all done with, with that purpose. So I find time. I do get very tired. Don't get me wrong. I get extremely tired. I get exhausted. I get run down. I get all those things. Um, mm. But for me, like, I, I don't know, like I just, I love what I do and I love the people around me. So it's all very worth it. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. And, and I think just that for underlying philosophy of trying to accentuate the positive and also, yeah, being, being mindful of how, how special people are within our lives and, and tapping into that to, to get energy as well. That's uh, that's really, really great to hear Mo. And it sounds like it's a, you have a philosophy that, that works super well for you. So that's, that's awesome. Really, really awesome. Um, there's a lot of people out there who, and some of them might be joining us today on the webinar, um, who are carers, 
but they, they might not identify with the, the role and the term carer, that they're doing really sort of what you do, Mo, on a, on a daily basis. But for whatever reason, they're, they're a bit uncertain about identifying as, as being a carer. Do you have, have any advice to people out there who are, you know, doing a wonderful job within their families or friendship groups being a, um, being a carer, but aren't really sure about embracing that term? Yeah, and I'll be completely honest, I was you a couple of years ago. Like I was that person a couple of years ago. Like I, you know, I was Vinny's sister and I am Vinny's sister, but um, you know, being a full-time carer, for me, it was just like, I'm a sister. Like, you know, I, I don't, you know, I didn't identify or knew I identified as a carer um, and as a full-time unpaid carer. So for me, I was just like, you know, I'm just doing what I'm doing because I love it and, and, and mm. I love her and I want to take care of her and um, I want to protect her forever. But I'm also very bloody proud that I can also say I'm a carer because I, along with so many others, make so many sacrifices um, and we don't even know it. And, 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 you know, without carers, you know, you know, for me, I, I would break my heart to think about where Vinny would be without me or without a carer. Um, so without amazing carers, you know, um, there's that, not that, uh, you know, that community goes and, and, and then, you know, the people who, you know, need, need people to take care of them um, are left vulnerable. So um, you're, you're pretty amazing when you're caring and, 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 you, and embrace that. It's not something that, you know, it's something to be proud of, I think. Oh, I like that. I think that's really, really great advice. And just for everyone out there as well, um, the Care Gateway absolutely recognises that carers are coming from all different walks of life. And um, we're encouraging everyone, regardless of whether you um, identify as being a carer um, um, or not, just to, to get in touch, to, to get in contact. Um, the Care Gateway team, um, and especially our intake team that's um, uh, coordinated by Mary Health, has lots and lots of experience chatting with people from all different backgrounds and um, from, from all different walks of life. So if you're a bit uncertain about what the Care Gateway is, you know, do feel free to always reach out, get in contact via the phone or online and, and, and we can reach out to you. But um, I think uh, sort of following on from, from Mo's sentiments there, you know, really am happy to join you in the conversation at, um, at any point. Um, so that, that would be our advice from, from the Care Gateway's perspective. Um, 2020 hasn't been an, an easy year for NDIS participants. And we know that there are a lot of carers out there who are supporting loved ones um, who are living with a disability. And 2020 hasn't been so easy for Vinny either on that front, Mo. I'm just wondering how you found this year in terms of navigating the role of the NDIS and, and some of the challenges that have been, um, been attached to that. Yeah, it's been really hard. Like I, I, you know, I will be the first one to say one of the, for me in this household, one, one of the biggest things has been um, Vinny through this, you know, because she doesn't understand, she doesn't get it. She doesn't, um, um, and, and she just wants to be, she just wants to be Vinny. Um, and, you know, for me, it's, it's hard to talk about because, um, I want always want the best for her. I want her to be able to, to have everything she wants. And um, sometimes I feel like, um, and this is my own opinion, I feel like, you know, people like Vinny are kind of left to the side. They're kind of, you know, you know, not they're kind of forgotten about or, you know, not as important. Um, so for me, I think it's been it's been really hard for me to see that. You know, I see, you know, um, you know, I know a lot of Vinny's friends. Um, uh, you know, they, they live, might live in a share home um, where, they, where they just don't have family. And that absolutely, you know, for me, that, 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 that hurts my heart for them. But um, to know that, you know, without school, they're just in a home and just, you know, stuck there. And a lot of people right now are struggling with being stuck in a home. But, you know, people like Vinny's friends actually have nowhere to go. So for me, I think about Vinny's friends and I think about Vinny and Vinny being really upset. Like we, we thought for the first time ever, is Vinny depressed? You know, is this what Vinny said is because she just didn't want to hang out with us anymore. She didn't want, you know, she just wanted to lay in bed and stay there. And um, every day she would ask, can she go back to school the next day? Every day she would ask, can she go see mum? Um, you know, there was times mm -hmm. where she cried. Um, there was times that she had like little breakdowns of crying. So it's been really, really hard on Ben. 
um, and, and her how, how are things go, how are things how are things going now well, now she's allowed to go back to school a couple of days so she um, mm -hmm. that's been a really good um, for her because you know when, when I talk about really when we teach you something it's about information re retaining and also then creating a process so her everyday process is wake up coffee help go to school come home train so when she couldn't have that that was hard and now she's starting to get that back a little bit so I feel like uh, you know she's 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 back in the mend and she's seeming you know we're, we're trying to give her little projects here as well um, we're, we're you know we're, like little online app stuff that she can do extra schoolwork or something so um, you know she's doing all right. That sounds like a really good strategy in place. Um, and glad to hear that things have improved. That sounds as though it's been really, really challenging, challenging time. And, um, and yeah, really, really pleased to hear that things have um, started to move in a bit more of a positive direction. Um, my next question, it's a, it's a big one, but I think it's important to address in Carers Week. I'm wondering, and perhaps looking at your own experiences too, Mo, what sort of advice you would give to families where families are thinking about transitioning or changing the caring role from, from one family member to another, when there's that sort of doubt and that uncertainty about, oh, is it mum who looks after um, and I'm, um, uh, the care recipient or is it dad or is it sister or brother, perhaps, you know, parents are starting to enter a stage where they're no longer you know, are capable of, 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 being, of being a carer anymore. What sort of advice would you give to to families where they're considering this, these big life changing um, uh, conversations and, and trying to make huge decisions? Yeah, I, I feel like I'll answer it in terms of what I would do because I don't want to tell people what I feel like they should do or shouldn't do because everybody's story is different and everyone's situation is different. But for me personally, I found it really hard for a long time to ask for help. Like I really did. Like I found it so hard because I was like, you know, I've got to protect her. I've got to, you know, take care of her. I can't let anyone else look after her. She's my responsibility. Um, and that was me for a long time. And, and I found it so hard to, you know, take a weekend off. And I was kind of like a little bit drowning in that because it was, uh, you know, um, I also wasn't taking care of me. And the best thing I did, and, and one of the things that I, I've, uh, you know, I'm so happy I, I took was was get that little bit of help, and that little bit of help came from you know family, and and that would be my mom or my sister, and that is hey, um, Vinny wants to stay with you this weekend. Is that okay? So you know every now and then Vin wants to go have a sleepover, and for me that you know that's Vinny's little outing, but at the same time that's my me time. That's my time for me to, um, you know, um, take care of me, and then also you know when I, you know if there's ever a time where I, I want to go away or you know do something that is about me time that's also important so for me it was asking for that help and and, and um having that trust and, and just going it's going to be okay if she's okay she's in great hands you're allowed to take care of you or you know and that's just how i would i would personally look at it i like it i like it a lot um Mo, um, we're fast coming to the, the Q&A section. So just to call out to everyone who's joined us for this webinar to keep sending through those questions using the Q&A box. So really looking forward to, to receiving them. Um, a couple more questions before, before we do go to the Q&A. Mo, as far as I'm aware, looking at you on the, the football field and, and on Survivor, you're super fit and very athletic and that's an important part of, um, of, of, of your world. But sometimes fitness and being healthy have a slightly different meaning. And I'm wondering for you, what does um, um, health mean to you? And, and, and what would you, how would you look at the importance of, of staying healthy? Yeah, you're gonna ask me to be super honest here. <laughs> and I'm, I'm gonna be very <laughs> honest. I, I am fit for me. I am my kind of fit. I am my kind of healthy. Um, and, and same as Vinny. Vinny is Vinny's kind of fit. Like I think Vinny's fit and I think Vinny's healthy. You know, she's, she's doing really well in life. It's got to be what you want. Like I understand, you know, for us, all of Vinny's training is all about her being healthy on the inside, making sure her heart's healthy um, because I want her to live forever, um, you know. And so that's what her training's about for us. It's, we never use the word skinny or fat in our household because that doesn't exist here. I think everybody's beautiful in their own way. So 
you know, it's got to be what, what people think is their version of fit and healthy. It shouldn't be what a magazine says. It shouldn't be what, you know, um, an army person says. It should be what you think and what you want in life. And if what you want in life is to run 5K, that's epic. If what you want in life is to run one or walk 1K, that's epic. If you don't want to train at all, but you want to eat healthy, that's got to be your choice. It's, it can't be someone else telling you what to do or how to do. So Vinny, every day, she walks for 80 minutes every day and absolutely loves it. She is, she's lost 50 kilos since she started, which was That's two and a half, huge. yeah, which was two and a half years ago. So it was no protein shakes. There was no special meals. There wasn't any special diets. It was just, she ate well, she ate healthy. Um, you know, we still eat pizza on the weekend and stuff like that, but she predominantly ate healthy and she just walked every day. Um, and, and, and we've got, we actually, one of the amazing things was before she uh, got fit, she had an overactive thyroid. So no matter what happened, she was putting on weight. And we went back to the doctors recently, had some more tests and done, and she has no thyroid and the doctor is stunned. He's like, I've never seen something like it. So it didn't, you know, all of her activeness and, and, and being super fit is just somehow it doesn't exist anymore. Um, so for us, it's all about her health. Um, and, and that's what people just, people have to go off. I, I feel like I never look at someone and go, if I run, you know, if I run 10K in this amount of time, I'm going to be fit. No, I'm fit because I feel fit and that's good enough. I like that. I like that a lot. I think um, that's a, it's a really, really, really special way to, a special way to approach it. I want to look at one other dimension of health in there. So you've talked about, you know, the attitudes and outlook towards physical health and yeah when we started this conversation, you were telling me about your incredibly busy schedule and the question that came to mind as you were talking me through it is what does Mo do to look after her own mental health? Because often <laughs> yeah. when, when with a schedule like that, there's risk of burnout and, and, and things just getting too much. So just wondering what do you do Mo to make sure that, yeah. you know, your mental health is where you want it to be? I'll, I'll be so honest with you here because I haven't told anyone this, but I've spent, um, I've spent more time throughout this last six months meditating and speaking to a psychiatrist than I ever have for mental health, just for me to have that person, that outlet, that person to talk to, um, get, you know, be able to have chats with. And then, you know, so for me, once I started feeling like I was just getting a little bit down with everything happening and, and just watching so many things, bad things happen, I just didn't know how to deal with it. So having a chat to someone was absolutely helping me. And then one of the, two of the biggest things for me I've found, actually I'm gonna say three of the biggest things for me that I've found that's helped me get back on the right path is one is I've learned how to meditate. Um, I've had to learn how to do that and I do it every morning and I do it because I want to and, and I like it. Like it's, it definitely starts my day on, on a little bit of a zen. The other thing is I just try to get outside every day, go for a walk or a run. Um, could be 15 minutes, could be half an hour, could be 45 minutes, just get some fresh air. And, and the other thing for me is a training, like my training. I try to train every single day because I love the endorphins it gives me when I'm finished. I just feel like, yep, yeah, I'm good. Like I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling better today. Um, cause I, that's what training does for me. So for my mental health, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm meditating. I'm talking to someone and I'm also getting outside as much as I can. Fantastic. Any uh, interesting or useful meditation approaches or um, styles that you might recommend or websites for people to check out or just up, up for people to find their own? Yeah, well, the, the one that I did, he actually teaches you how to meditate in the first like uh, 15 sessions. You do only goes 15 minutes. Like it's, it's pretty quick. But yeah. the, the voiceover teaches you how to meditate. Um, in like the first 15 sessions, the first 15 days. And I felt that really helpful because I felt like before I did that, my meditations, I was fighting the meditation where when I, once I learned how to let it go, so much more comfortable. And I think it's called, this is no plugs or anything. I think it's called One Giant Mind. Like it's a free app. You can download it. It's an app on your phone, chuck your headphones on or just press play, lay down or sit up. And it literally just changed, changed my, um, the way I started my day, which was really nice. Oh, I love like that a lot. I think that start of the day is a really important thing. Um, for me, music plays a, a big role. One oh, yeah. thing that I love to do at the start of the day is just to get out the guitar um, or the clarinet or just even listen to listen to a piece of music as well too, slowing down to a point where you can actually really 
connect with connect with music uh, yeah. before the sort of rush of thoughts and planning and the busyness starts with the day. Does music play all, at all role in your world, Mo? I love music. Absolutely love it. And, um, you know, I actually just recently, um, you know, my, my dad passed away about 15, 16 years ago, but I just recently went to my mum's house and went through all of his storage and I found... Uh, he was a he was a record player like a dj with records and i found all of his records from like the 70s 80s 90s and nice. i've got a record player now so in the morning i just chuck a record on and um you know off, off she goes like that's you know it also it gives me good vibes so yeah it's a good start. <laughs> that sounds that sounds so good what sort of music was your dad into Oh, everything. So everything you can think of, he absolutely has it. Like he's got everything you can think of. Like uh, it was a good, it was a bit of reggae man, but we've got everything, yeah. you know? So it's, it's really cool. Oh, that's cool. That sounds a little bit like my mum's CD collection, which at the moment is just overflowing uh, out from the kitchen cabinet. Uh, there's CDs everywhere, still holding on to them just for, uh, I think just for sentimental reasons sometimes, and also because it can be hard to find online, but it's really cool being able to walk down memory lane and music has that attachment to those different memories as well too, which is often yeah. so, so special to, yeah, to connect with that. My last question before we go into Q and A, so we've, I can see the questions are teed up to, to pose to you, Mo, which is really exciting. Um, but if people do have more, do, do send them through. As Melbourne slowly starts returning to something resembling a, a COVID normal or something resembling normal programming, what are you looking forward to the most? As you know, if things start to become a little eased up, a, a bit more free, what would what would you what are you, what are you, what are you hoping? What 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 sort of uh, what sort of there maybe it's under the surface a little bit that you sort of had to push away, not knowing when it will happen. But what's um what are you looking forward to, Mo? I'll be here at my mum's house. That's it. Like I'm barbecue looking forward to my um, barbecue at mum's to see all my family, um, just to catch up, get some hugs. Um, yeah, we're due to have a baby in, uh, I think, just about less than a month. So, you know, I, I wanted to open up so everyone could come see Bob's. Uh, yeah, I, I'm excited just family. Like I'm a massive family girl. Like I don't need to, you know, I don't need nothing, you know, extravagant. Just, just family, barbecue, glass of wine. I'm happy. Nice. Is there is there something favourite for the barbecue? Um, chops, uh, sausages, steaks, or a particular yeah, cuisine? Yeah, I I, uh, I don't eat meat, so um, ah, ah, no, I don't eat meat. Yeah, so there's a there's a um, thing called uh, there's like vegan sausages and stuff like that. Love that. I'm all about that. Yeah. Oh. Excellent vegan sausages, super duper. I'm looking forward to my mum's mozzarella balls. She does a, a, an excellent job at that and I haven't had that for a while and it's always really, really delicious and a big sense of home attached to that and haven't yeah. seen her for a while. So really, uh, really looking forward to, to chomping away on probably far too many, including the potato <laughs> skins as well too. Yeah. All right, so Q&A time. Let's have a look and Let's see what it. the questions are. We have a few that are here. All right, so first question is, what is the favourite thing that you and Vinny do together? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I do everything with Vinny. Uh, but one of my favourite things is just listening to Vinny talk while we have a coffee. Um, you know, we have a coffee every morning. People would probably watch that on my Instagram if you follow me. But um, just have a coffee and she just tells me about her day, um, her day coming or a day before. And I just love listening to her talk. We sit there for a bed now and she just tells me about everything and, she just, oh, she just, I don't, you know, it doesn't, I try to teach her everything, but she still comes out with the most loveliest things about how she wants to help people and how she wants to do things for people. I think she's just so amazing. So uh, I love doing everything with her. There's nothing that I don't include her in, but um, coffee chats are one of my favorites. Coffee chats. Wonderful. Um, next question is you and Vinny are inspirations. Um, besides school, do you access any other formal supports for Vinny? Uh, yeah, well, one of the other supports we, you know, um, the NDIS, um, we ask them for one other thing. So when Vinny was born, um, she was born with her feet um, turned in and, and it, she took a long time to walk, like years to walk by herself. Um, so her feet were turned in and I'll turned on the side and her toes are webbed and she's like a size, uh, she's probably like a size five, like a very tiny foot. Um, and we found because of the width and, and, and her feet, we couldn't, we'd have to get a size nine shoes to fit her. 
and it was just so hard and she has trouble walking already so she was falling over so one of the things we accessed was we asked for her to be able to see uh, like a podiatrist like a, a specialized foot shoemaker and they allowed her <laughs> you know they allowed her to get one pair of shoes um which was special specially made for her foot and they were the first shoes she's ever had at the age of you know, we only got them last year, so 26, 27, that were specially made for her foot. Um, um, so that's one thing that, that, that we, uh, we, we got help with. And the other thing is we, we, got, we only just started this year was getting help with someone coming over um, on the weekend or during the week that will take Vinny out to do something. So it could be bowling, could be movies, it could be footy. And so that she starts creating another relationship with, with someone that is like a friend. Um, so yeah, so that's something we also started accessing and then also, you know, while she's out at the bowling or the movies or the footy, that's kind of like also my date night. So it's kind of works hand in hand. Neat. It's, uh, it sounds like a, a, a good, good, good assortment there. Um, next question is, oh, it's a slightly different topic that's come through, come through. Who's your tip for the 2020 AFL men's grand final? <laughs> Great question. I last night, like I love uh, Geelong, but I was cheering for Collingwood and was really disappointed. Uh, but now I'm feeling like there's only two teams I want to win. It's uh, Geelong and Brisbane. So I hope that doesn't Geelong disappoint you. Yeah, I think Brisbane just yep. deserve it. They've just got so much heart, so much want. And Geelong, you know, I, I love the way Geelong go about their footy. They're very family orientated club. Wonderful. I mean, I think Brisbane has uh, got a big advantage with uh, the fact that the grand final will be played in uh, in Queensland. That'll Hope definitely help it. for sure. But yeah. yeah, watching watching Geelong last night, oh, they were they were in ominous form. No no yeah. question about it. Yep. Then moving from one topic to another, um, what advice would you give to people who might feel that asking for support is a sense of failure? Yeah, that's probably why I never asked for support for so long. Even, you know, getting someone to come over on the weekends. I was, I was, Val always said to me, it's okay to get help. And I was like, no, it's not. Like, it's, you know, like I was so against it for so long. And I promise you it was the best decision I made. You know, having that person come in um, to be able to take Vinny out for three hours or six hours is exactly what Vinny needs to be out in the community. Um, especially when we, you know, we both work full time, but then also exactly what I need for me. So um, don't be afraid to ask for help. I think that, you know, you're doing an amazing job and there's nothing, um, there's nothing wrong with, with getting that little bit of help. There you go. Don't be afraid to ask for hope, for help. And um, that's, uh, I think that's really, really, really good, good sound advice there. Um, another question that's come through, what do you think you will need to alter how you look after yourself as you get older? I know you're not a big fan of planning more and maybe not looking too, too far ahead, um, but um, this is a question all the same. Um, so yeah, what do you think you will need to alter how you look after yourself as you get older in order to keep looking after Vinny? Uh, I feel that, nah, yeah, great. That's a great question. I haven't thought about that yet, but I think for me it is um, never forgetting to put me first. Or I feel like never forgetting to allow me to put me first sometimes. So, you know, um, I still have a bucket list of things I'd love to do. Um, there's like a, a South African safari, which are like what dreams are made of. I would love nothing more in this world than to do that. Um, and the thing is, uh, like, I'd normally try and take Vinny everywhere I go, but Vinny, it's not Vinny's thing. She loves cruises. And I, I've, I always send her on cruises once a year. Um, she goes on a cruise with my mum um, or once every two years, just around New Zealand, which is a two-week cruise, and that's her thing. She doesn't like going overseas. So for me, it's like I have to still ticking off my bucket list of things that I would love to do. And so things like going to South Africa is one or... Um, and it's probably like I've got a small bucket list. It's going, but I'm gonna be honest. Uh, it's probably my, one of my one and onlys. Um, it's also like I'm, I'm excited to have a family. I'm excited for Vinny to be, um, you know, helping out with Bob and, and stuff like that. And and one of my other dreams is to buy a house so that we're super secure. So, um, you know, my my dreams a little bit different, but it's kind of also always remembering that it's okay to still continue to do things that you want to do. And that doesn't make you any less or it doesn't make you a bad person because you're an amazing person. If you're a carer, you are 
literally what I would call an angel. Um, so it's okay to do things that you want to do. I like that. Just for uh, all the listeners out there, I have a fly that's buzzing around my microphone at the moment. I think it <laughs> must be related to cousin, the Australian cousin of the fly that hijacked the US vice presidential debate during the week. So excuse the buzzing if it's there. Um, you mentioned um, about becoming a mum. Uh, Mo, how are you feeling about some? Um, tell, tell me a bit more about the excitement and how you're feeling about becoming a mum and starting a family and how mm. Vinny's looking forward to becoming an auntie. Yeah, well, um, you would think like I've got 14 brothers and sisters and I've, I've literally got about, man, I've got about 40 to 50 nieces and nephews. Um, so a lot of kids, I grew up with a lot of kids. I am so bloody nervous about holding a tiny baby of mine. Like I am, yeah, I'm freaking nervous about that. But I'm so excited. I think that is, you know, I, I, I you know, wanted a family since I was very young. So I'm very, very excited, but I feel like as like I'm the most excited person in the world, okay? But I feel like Vinny is more excited. So Vinny has the baby app. So the baby app that counts down the weeks and the days. So she knows exactly what how many days are left and exactly how many um, weeks are left and what day we are. So every single day when we have coffee, she'll say something like um, day 210, you, you know, week 34. So, you know, and, and wow. every day she's like, is, nice. is Bub kicking today? So, you know, she can't wait. Like she is just so excited to, um, so excited to, to, to be, we're, we're not sure yet because we don't know the sex of the, of the baby, but she doesn't know, we're not sure. She wants to be the sister and she also wants to be the auntie. So we've left it up to her to whatever she wants to be. Very good. Um, on a different theme here, um, Mo, I really liked your outlook on fitness and I'm wondering how you manage staying healthy with, um, with being a vegetarian. Um, how do you uh, look out for yourself and keep up with or the best nutrition? Yeah, it's a great question. I feel like everybody, there's this stigma around saying that you don't eat meat, that um, how do you get iron and how do you get protein? Um, but there's more iron and protein in veggies than what there are in actual meat. And um, that's something I, I, I learned very quick. Um, uh, and and I've actually gone and got blood tests most recently. And, and, and um, Belle is also um, vegetarian and she's, her bloods and my bloods are, a100 so we have you know our, our health is amazing and we do it because uh we love animals and we love our planet and that's that's why we do it so um there's more you know we just we just eat very well people always like what do you eat if you don't eat meat and i'm like just so much food you just like it took me a while to educate myself and I'm very educated now and um people love um bell's little um, foods that you put up because people are like how is that vegetarian that's unbelievable so uh yeah it's uh it's just a case of educating yourself on, on on what is good for you and that's what we've done in being a vegetarian oh, i like that that sounds like a, a very very solid commitment that that's there uh, and often one of the only ways to, to really sustain it too <laughs> rather than just uh treating it as a as a passing fad um one question is about your role as a carer when or sort of your relationship with Vinny from when you were younger or from growing up and um the question is wanting to know did you help care for Vinny um when you were just a kid or a teenager i sure did the thing is um Vinny and i have been so close since we were tiny kids um so Vinny um couldn't talk for a long time but she would do a lot of gibberish like a lot of um a gibberish talk and that was that was she was like that that's her way of talking. But for me, because I spent so much time with her, I knew exactly what she was saying and I knew exactly what she meant. Um, and so every time we had a specialist appointment with, with um, the specialist at the Royal Children's, I would take a day off work to go with um, my dad to the specialist because Vinny would talk to me and I would talk to the specialist. And it was just crazy that I could understand exactly what she wanted and exactly what she meant and I still do like I still you know sometimes people are like what did Vinny say and I will know it straight away so yeah no I've been you know me and Vinny have been like this since we were tiny kids and um we you know we even used to share a bed so you know ever since you're little we all, we all played a little part but Vinny and I have been close since then 
I think people have definitely uh, tapped onto the fact that you're not the biggest fan of, uh, of plans, but um, one question <laughs> that came out here is, um, hey, Mo, what are your plans for 2021? Um, will we see you back on the football field again? Uh, 2021? Yeah, no, I, I would love to play footy again. I think it kind of depends on where life is at. Um, you know, you mum, family's got to come first for sure. Um, I'd love to play footy, but footy comes with a lot of commitment. It comes with um, five extra days a week, four hours a day at a club. And that is, you know, on top of that being, you know, working full time on top of that, taking care of everything. It's very hard. It's very um, demanding. So I figure like if I find the right place, yeah, if I don't, then family's got to come first. Um, but if I had to say something about 2021, what, where I'd say, uh, I'm in love with Japan. I'd love to go visit Japan again. I went there in February and I had the best time. So right now my only goal is to try and go to Japan or New Zealand in 2021. I'm staying positive. Well, I think my internet connection is back. Uh, sorry about that. That's the, the nature of 2020 with uh, internet connections dropping <laughs> dropping in and out. Um, but uh, just wanted to thank you on behalf of everyone at the Carer Gateway for, for your time, for joining us and uh, for sharing your really wonderful insights. A, a massive thank you to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Wonderful. And um, that brings us Thanks, to an Mike. end. Uh, for today's conversation. Um, people can find more information about the Care Gateway online, on the Care Gateway website, at the Mary Health website as well, um, maryhealth.org.au. Um, all the information that you want to find in terms of contacting the Care Gateway is available there. It's also information links about events um, that are coming up throughout the, uh, the rest, of, um, rest of Carers Week. Um, a big thank you and a hats off to all of you who are joining, who are carers. We acknowledge you um, and we appreciate you. And um, we thank you for spending some of your Sunday afternoon with us as well too. So thanks everyone and we'll end it there.